Uh, now starting, uh, just uh, five minutes for ceremonial. Okay, uh, okay, session, okay. Yeah? okay. Okay. Okay, okay, Professor. Okay, I am reaching uni at five minutes then. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay. Silakan Elsa mulai. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Professor Dr. Andes Delphic MSC PhD as the head of PPT Combinatorics and Crown. The Honorable Dr. Nagamani as the speaker. The Honorable Mr. Zainur Rasid Ridlam as the chairman of the Cool Cube Commission and the guest ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Cool Cube Global Synchronization of Uncertain Fractional Order Firm, BA, Neural Network with Time Delay via Improved Fractional Order Integral in a quill. First of all, let's say thanks to our law who has given us radiance, happiness, healthy, and mercy so we can attend and participate in this event. Praise and solution you upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ladies and gentlemen, in this special morning, we would like to inform about our today agenda. Please allow me to read several sequence of our agenda. The first is opening. The second is singing national anthem of Indonesia. The third is singing hymn of University of Jember. The fourth is welcoming speech. The vibe is opening remarks from the head of Puyipete, Combinatorics and Craft. The sixth is reading and prayer. The seventh is the presentation from the invited speaker, Dr. Nagamani. And the last is closing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to take advantage of this time, Let's start aging up by reciting Basmalah together. Bismillah. Entering the next aging up, there is singing national anthem of Indonesia, there is Indonesia Raya, and the hymn of University of Jember. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand up.
you, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seat. The next agenda is opening speech and reading prayer will be given by head of PUPT Combinatorics and Craft. To Professor Dr. Ms. David, MSc PhD, please welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Associate Professor Nagamani and all the guest lecture series participant today. Alhamdulillah, today again prior to international conference on networks, uh, neural networks and machine learning <clears throat> uh, conference, which is uh, which will be held tomorrow until Wednesday. We invite our uh, collaborator who consistently uh, develop a joint research with our research group members, Professor Nagamani. Welcome, Professor, again to University of Jember. Thank and you. Hopefully, Thank you. hopefully next year we come down to our university. Sure, <laughs> sure definitely. <laughs> and uh, uh, again, we can have a, a good discussion. Yes, As sir. we uh, said to you that we already started uh, uh, studying uh, the artificial yes. networks, especially in the application of the agriculture. Yes. By still, it is just initiation. We still needing your guidance because you are a mentor that I said yesterday in the yes. neural network. Hopefully, today we can have a good discussion after uh, your presentation within like a 45 minute presentation and then after that we can have a discussion. I am already in a campus now. I just uh, go to upstairs. Uh, it is just in uh, and still in the car. <clears throat> and by reciting Basmala, I formally uh, this uh, guest lecture series and uh, open for all of you. Thank you very much. And please welcome Professor Nagamani to share uh, her slide. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Professor David, for the opening speech. The next agenda is the presentation by our invited speaker, Dr. Nagaman. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our speaker, Dr. Nagaman. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. And uh, I will share my PPT. Please, one minute. Open Larka. The first slide. Yes, one minute. Yes, one minute. Yes, one minute. Okay, is the screen visible? Professor, is the screen visible? 
It is already feasible. Ah, uh, okay, Professor. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Make it uh, slide slow, please. Make it slide slow. Slide, slide slow. Yeah. Slide share. It is already slide slow. Slide it is already in slide slow mode. Okay, okay, okay. Just okay. keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Is it okay, Professor? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, already. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank our Professor, uh, Professor Dafik for inviting me to this uh, lecture series. And I thank every member of this uh, lecture series organizers. And uh, I thank everyone for inviting me and for giving me this nice opportunity. And uh, my presentation is about introduction to artificial neural networks. Escape with the Escape X one X one Okay. Is it full show If you minimize it, minimize it. No, that's open full screen, every Full screen. Okay. 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 Good morning, everyone. Now, my presentation is about introduction to artificial neural network and uh, some simple applications. No? So, we, why we need uh, this artificial neural network? First, we will see what is Artificial neural networks. So in general, artificial neural networks is an information, information processing paradigm which is inspired by the way the biological nervous system like brain process information. No? The key element of this paradigm is the novel structure of the processing uh, information processing system. You know, our brain has uh, a complex uh, information processing system. Hmm? So it is composed of large number of highly interconnected processing elements, which are called the neurons, working in union to solve specific problems. But uh, artificial neural networks like a human will also learn by example. Actually, an artificial neural network is structured for specific applications, particularly for uh, pattern recognition and data classification like that. And uh, in biological systems, learning takes place by adjusting uh, the synaptic connections existing between the neurons. The same case is also true for artificial neural networks also, right? See, actually a neural network is a massively parallel distributed processor, processor and it has the natural propensity for storing experimental knowledge and making it available for use, okay? It basically resembles brain in two aspects. The first one is actually knowledge is acquired by the network through a learning process. And the second one is interneuron connection uh, strength called the synaptic weights are used to, to store the knowledge. Okay. Basically artificial neural network is nothing but an information processing system. In this information processing system, the elements called as neurons process the information and the signals are transmitted, transmitted by means of connection links. And also the links possess some associated weight. And these weights along with the incoming sig uh, uh, signal, that means net input, is multiplied for getting the net output. I mean expected output. Okay. Mainly, the artificial neural network is characterized by its three components. First one is architecture. And the second one is training or learning. And third one is activation functions. So these three are the main components of the neural net network architecture, right? Okay. Okay, why we need to go with artificial neural networks? What is the advantage of having neural networks? Okay, it has some desirable characteristics like massive parallelism and distributed representation and computation. It has also learning ability and it has some generalization ability, adaptivity, and it has also fault tolerance 
organism and it is of low energy consumption so it has other than these the neural networks have many features which are very uh, uh, important to us so because of these reasons we are having this artificial neural networks for our le deep learning right okay next we see what is the historical development of neural networks from the year 1943 to still day, till date uh, the structure of neural networks is updated and is developed further and further okay in 1943 mikulak and pitts introduced the uh, basic neural networks model so it is a logical calculus of neural networks so in this neural network a logical function is employed by means of the neurons by adjusting the weight sets after that in 1949 Hebs introduced the neural network the details of which can be found in the book organization of behavior what the con concept behind the hip theory is that if two neurons are found to be active simultaneously strength of the connection between them should be increased this is the basic uh, logic of Hebb neural network right in 1958 rosenblatt introduces perceptron actually in perceptron network weights and the connection path are adjusted and uh, there is a method of iterative weight adjustment is used in this perceptron network right and after that, in 1960, Widrow and Hoff introduced Adeline. What is meant by Adeline? It is nothing but adaptive linear neuron. And it uses a learning rule called lean, least mean square rule or delta rule. Okay. And in the year 1982, John Hofield introduced a neural network by using Ising spin glass type of model to store the information in dynamically stable network right this is this network is also gives efficient solution for traveling salesman problem and it is also suitable for both continuous valued and vector valued functions okay in 1972 cohen and self introduced self organizing maps this neural net uses topological mappings, which are usually found in biological neural nets. And in the year 1985, Parker and Lecume introduced back propagation neural net. And this method propagates the error information at the output units back to the hidden units by using a generalized delta rule. And in the year 1988, Grosberg introduced the learning uh, learning uh, net neural network which has the same uh, learning rule as that of the kohana and it's, it is also called the counter propagation net and the year 1987-1990 carpenter together with grossberg invented adaptive resonance theory it was designed for both binary inputs as well as continuous valued inputs okay in the year 1988 broomhead and levy introduced uh, radial basis function this is multi-layer, but it is similar to back propagation network. And after that, in 1990, Vapnik introduced the support vector machine. Okay. So, so this is the historical development of neural networks. See, every type of neural networks will have uh, its own merits. It is, each one has its own uh, applications. For uh, the suitable problem, suitable type of networks can be adapted. Okay. And next we see what is actually the biological neural networks. A biological neuron or a nerve cell consists of four components. The first one is synapses, and second one dendrites, cell body, and the axon. Actually, the function of these elements are the dendrite actually receives signal from other neuron and the soma sums all the incoming signal, whereas axon transmits signal through axon to other cells. Actually, uh, when a particular amount of input is received then the cell, cell fires that cell will transmit signal through axon to other cells okay then this is the model of your biological neuron in our human brain there are four parts this actually this part represent dendrites it uh, receives the inputs 
and this is soma the process will take place in this part and this is axon it transmit the signals process the signals to other neurons and the synapses act as a electrochemical contact between neurons okay and based on this model the artificial neural network is structured as follows as here see in place of neuron we have cell body and in place of soma we have summation and in place of this is called connections or weights so dendrites act as connections or weights and this is output here acts on reflex as output okay so cell body becomes so neuron in biological network becomes cell body in artificial neural network and the dendrites in neural uh, biological network becomes weights or interconnections and soma becomes net input and axon becomes output okay this is the model this this is the artificial neural network framed by the structure of the biological neural networks okay and next we see the comparison between artificial and biological neural networks with respect to speed the artificial neural networks are faster in processing information right whereas in biological neurons are slow in processing the information and for processing many programs in artificial neural networks we have many programs with a large number of instructions so they operate in a sequential manner one after the other okay whereas in biological neural networks the brain has the capability to operate with the parallel operations okay here one by one in case of artificial the operations will take place one by one whereas in brain the operations will take place simultaneously and the size and complexity in artificial neural network this uh, network do not involve uh, much computational neurons so it is difficult to perform complex pattern recognition okay but in case of uh, biological neural network we know we all know our human brain has uh, 10 power 11 billion neurons okay so because of that our brain has the ability uh, to solve uh, complex pattern recognition right whereas in uh, artificial neural network it is not the case and in case of storage here in a usual computer the information is stored in the memory uh, which is addressed by the location if a new information is included in the same location then it will destroy the old information whereas in case of biological neural network the new information will not destroy the old information okay and the fault tolerance regarding fault toler fault tolerance artificial networks are uh, inherently not fault tolerance because once the information is corrupted then we cannot retry whereas in the new biological neural network it has a fault tolerance uh, mechanism so it is uh, not the case in the artificial I mean artificial neural network and next one control mechanism there is a control device to monitor all the computational part of the artificial neural network whereas there is no central uh, control mechanism in the case of biological neural networks okay so these are some of the differences between artificial and biological neural networks and next to see the ba basic building building blocks of artificial neural network and uh, some of the three are the main uh, building blocks first one is architecture network architecture and setting the weight and the activation function so what is network architecture actually the arrangement of neuron into layers and the pattern of connection within and in between the layer are called the architecture that is arrangement of neuron in terms of layers what is network architecture arrangement of neurons in terms of layers right actually as uh, also neuron within layer are found to be fully interconnected or not, uh, not interconnected that is not necessary that may be the neurons within same layer may be fully interconnected or not necessarily interconnected there are various types of network architecture they are called feed forward see feed forward network and the competitive network and recurrent network like that in the feed forward architectures actually the activation of the input unit are set and the prob and it is propagated through the network until the expected output are determined okay here the network acts as vector valued function and taking one vector on the input and the returning the another vector on the output actually these are some of the basic structures of 
these two are feed forwards. There are in feed forward, there are two types of feed forward network on a single layer, and another one is multi-layer. And another one is this is competitive, this is second a competitive type neural network. And these three are recurrent neural network. So, what is the difference between these type of neural network? For example, if you take feed forward neural network, here it is a feed forward net that is no input is taken as the no output is taken as the input. Okay, here the output is not taken as the input. And in first case, that is in single layer uh, network, it has only one layer of the weighted interconnections. This is input layer, this is output layer, so this consists of only one layer. In the multi layer, apart from input layer and output layer, that is additional uh, layers are also included. Why do we have to add these type of input layers? They are called hidden layers. The layers in between output and input are called hidden layers. It will improve the performance of the system. Actually, the hidden layers will uh, increase the performance of the expected output. That's why we have added hidden neurons wherever necessary. Okay. So in a multi-layer network, the net wave, the net where the signals flow from the input units to the output unit in forward direction, the multi-layer net posts one more or layers of nodes between the input and output. Okay. And the next one is competitive network. See, this is the, the uh, model for the competitive neural network here. In this type of network, this is similar to single layer. Actually, this is feed forward. And there are connections usually negative between the outputs. Here we can see the connections. These are output no, no, no units. In between these output units, the connections are made. Okay. So this is the difference of the competitive neural network. So this is mainly used to explain the formation of topographical, topographical maps, which actually occurred in uh, many animal uh, sensory systems, you know, like uh, vision, audition, touch, and smell like that. This is mainly used for that purpose. And next one is recurrent network. These three are the recurrent networks. Here, this is fully recurrent network. Here, every input is connected with every output. So every unit acts as input unit as well as output unit. Okay, this is called, this is different from feed forward network. In feed forward, only in the input is connected to the output in a direct way. No uh, input is, output is taken as the input. Here, the input is also taken as the output. That is the difference between feed forward and feed backward network. Okay, next one is, Next component is setting the weight. See, so network architecture is over. Setting the weight and third one is activation function. Next, we see what is the how to set the weight. Okay. Actually, the method of setting the values of the weights enables the process of learning or training. See, we can adjust the weights by using the mechanism called learning or training. The process of modifying the weights in the connection between network layer with the objective of achieving expected output is called training a network. What is training of a network? Adjusting weights is called the training of a network. Okay. What is learning? The internal process that takes place when a network is trained. That internal process is itself called the learning. Actually, adjusting the weights to get the expected output is called the training. The, the internal process, when your network is trained to uh, get the output is called the, that process is called the learning. So learning and training both are different, but within training, learning will take place, right? Within training, learning will take place. Okay. There are uh, three types of uh, training. First one is supervised training, second one is unsupervised training, third one is info reinforcement training. We see what is the difference between these three trainings. First one is supervised training in this training. This is the process of providing the network with the series of sample inputs. Here the network is given with the series of sample inputs. And the output is compared with the expected response. And the tra training will be continued until the network is able to provide the expected response. Okay. 
So uh, training is continued till we get the expected response. Actually, in your neural network, for a sequence of training input vectors, there may exist target output vectors. In this type of supervised returning, we may also have the target output vectors. In actually, in logical, if you take logical circuit, we have the target output as plus one if the uh, required logic function is satisfied. Otherwise, we take minus one if the logic condition is not satisfied. Okay. This is also applicable for pattern classification. And also, this is uh, adopted for uh, pattern association also. And uh, some of the supervised learning algorithms are uh, HebNet, Pattern Association Memory Network, and Back Propagation Network, Counter Propagation Network, all that. And the next one is unsupervised learning. Okay. So, in this type of training, if for the training input vectors, the target output is not known. Actually, in the previous unsupervised learning, the target output vector may be known, but in unsupervised learning, for the training input vectors, the target output is not known. That case of training is called the unsupervised learning. Okay. These unsupervised networks are also called a self-learning network or self-organizing networks because they have the capability to carry out self-learning. You know? This method is adapted in case of self-organizing feature maps and also adapt adaptive resonance theory, etc. Okay. And third one is reinforcement training. So here in this type of training, a teacher is also present, is also assumed to be present. But the right answer is not presented. Instead, the network is trained with an indication of whether the output answer is right or wrong. There is no answer. But the during training, the network is trained in such a way that the output answer is right or wrong. This is also similar to supervised learning. And uh, but compared to supervised and super, they are uh, compared to reinforcement. These first two types are better. Okay. Okay. These three are the training uh, training methods to be followed in the network. And the next one is our activation function. We will see later. Now we will go to artificial neural network terminologies. What are the terms involved in artificial neural network that we can see now? First one is weights and second one is activation function and third one is bias and fourth one is threshold okay we will see one by one what is weight as we all know a neural network consists of large number of simple processing elements called neurons and these neurons are connected to each other by communication links and these links are associated with weights okay that is, weight is an information used by the neural network to solve the specific problem. Okay. So, for example, you take a simple model. This is a simple neural network model. So, here X1 is the input unit. Here X2 is the, we are having two input units and we are having single output unit. So this X1 input unit for this X1 input unit, the weight is, this, the connection weight is given as W1 and for X2, the connection weight is given as W2, right? Here Y is the output and X1 is the activation of neuron one, input one and the input signal two and W1 is the weight connecting one to output and W2 is the weight for the connection between X2 to, that is input two to the output Y. How to calculate if in such, uh, neural network, how to find the net input. Net input is given by x1, w1. That is, this weight should be multiplied with the input signal and this weight should be multiplied with the input signal. And if you do, take the total of all these uh, multiplication, you will get the net output. This is the basic thing to be done for the for getting the net output. Okay. So this may be also written as in case of if you have many number of neurons, x1, x2, etc. This may be taken to be xi, yi, where i varies from 1 to n. This is the net input. Okay. Next one, we will go for act activation function. So why we, why we need uh, to have an activation function in artificial neural network? Actually, it is used to calculate output response. Actually, the sum of the weighted input signal is applied with the activation function. This sum is applied to activation function. After that, we will get the 
um, output response. So this activation function may be linear or non-linear. We will see some of them. Linear is identity, identity function and uh, step function. Identity function, we know f of x equal to x for all x. And in case of uh, step function, f of x will take two values, the binary, one, zero. The net input is greater than or equal to theta, where theta is the threshold. We will see it later. And uh, it, will, it will take zero if it will be lesser than uh, uh, threshold. So this is uh, identity function. This is called a step function. These are linear functions. And apart from these linear activation function, we will have two kinds of non-linear activation function. So this is non-linear activation function. See, sigmoidal function is a non-linear kind of non-linear activation function. There are two non-linear activation function. One is binary and bipolar. What is binary? <clears throat> so binary is nothing but uh, this. Uh, this will uh, range between zero and one. Binary means it will take two, only two zero and one. The type of this function will be like this: f of x equal to one by one plus e power. That is exponential of e power minus uh, alpha x. I'm 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 sorry. See, sigma x where sigma is the steepness coefficient. Okay. So this is the sigmoidal binary function. It is also called a logistic function. So this is uh, mostly used in um, um, artificial neural network processing, right? And the another one is, apart from this one, we will have another nonlinear activation function, which is called bipolar sigmoidal function. So what is bipolar sigmoidal function is? A function like uh, b of x is equal to 2 f of x minus 1. This function is called the bipolar. It, because it ranges over uh, minus 1 and plus 1. So here the binary function will ranges over 0 and 1, whereas bipolar sigmoidal function ranges over minus 1 and plus 1. Okay. So next one is, how to calculate the net input using matrix multiplication method? If we have several input units and several connection weights, then we have to use the matrix multiplication method for the product of two uh, vectors or matrices. Okay. And bias, what is bias actually? Yeah, bias is nothing but it's a, a weight and the connection from a unit whose activation is always one. Okay. It is fixed one. It is a weight given to a connection from a unit with activation one. So why we need that bias in uh, artificial neural network? Increasing the bias will actually increase the net input and it will also increase the performance of the system. That's why we are adding, including bias in our neural network. For example, let us uh, take a simple uh, network with bias. See, in the same model, you can take a bias with the, here the input unit is always taken to be one. This is bias B. So in this case, this net input becomes B plus, actually net input will be X1, W1 plus X2, W2. And here one more uh, connection is also, have, we are having one more connection. That is here the unit, the one is unit input. So one into B. So this is of the form, net will be of the form B plus summation XI, W1. Okay. So bias is actually included for getting the better performance of the neural network. Okay. And next we see what is threshold. Actually, threshold is a factor which is used to calculate activations of the given net. Right? Based on the value of threshold, the output may be calculated. That is based on the output theta value, the activation function is given values. If, uh, for example, if we have y is equal to f of net, that is the net input is equal to this activation function over net input will take plus one if our net input is greater than or equal to the threshold level theta and we will take minus one if net input is less than or equal to my theta. I'm sorry, it's strictly less than theta. Okay. And in another case, in some cases, we also have f of y is equal to that is f of net is equal to that is activation function will be given as one if we net input is greater than theta and y if net input is equal to theta and minus one if net input is 
less than theta. These two kind of active, uh, threshold levels are used mostly in the uh, artificial neural network models, right? Okay. And next we see the fundamental models of artificial neural networks, right? Piccola Fitz neural model is the very basic fundamental model of all the artificial neural networks. It was introduced by Nicola Fitz and uh, Walter Pitts in the year 1943. Actually, uh, they first give the formal definition of the synthetic uh, neuron model based on the biological model, right? This is the simple model of Nicola Pitts neuron model. Here, this model used only the binary digits, that is 0 and 1. So it is binary activated. And these neurons are connected by directed weighted path, and the connected path can be excitatory or inhibitory. Here, these are excitatory. Here, excitatory connections have passed to weights, whereas these are inhibitory. So, inhibitory connections will have negative weights. Here, uh, for you, unit inputs from X1 to X1 will have positive weights, that is inhibitory. I am sorry, excitatory. And from X1, N plus 1 to Xn plus 1 will have the uh, excitatory uh, connection weight, that is minus P. These are excitatory, these are inhibitory. Okay, based on the problem, we have to introduce this kind of connections that is excitatory as well as inhibitory, right? This Y is the Pitts, uh, Mikula Pitts neuron. And in this model, the activation function is taken to be F of input is equal to net input is equal to 1 if net input is greater than or equal to the threshold level theta and zero if the net input is less than theta because it is binary activated, we are having only two values, one and zero. And this theta is ranging over, theta is greater than NW minus P in case if uh, inhibitory connections will arise. And in an, if there is no inhibitory connections, and if we, if we have a K or more or excitatory inputs, then uh, theta should satisfy the condition. KW is greater than or equal to theta, which is greater than K minus 1W. So based on these two conditions, theta will be true. And uh, existence of uh, these uh, uh, sorry inhibitory units, the theta can be chosen used term used by these two uh, range. Okay. Next, we will see some applications of neural networks, simple applications based on Mikula Pitts model. Okay. We know what is a Mikula Pitts model and based on uh, that model, we can solve some logic functions. First, we will take under function. Okay. So under functions for under functions, we all know what is under function. It uh, gives a true value if both inputs are true and it uh, gives false value if it uh, either one is false, okay. That is the under table is, we know the true table for under function is given by, there are uh, two inputs. So we have uh, two input units, say x1 and x2. So we have one output unit, say y. So we know the input for one one, we will have the expected input as one because it is under function for, uh, if both are uh, true value, then it will return the true value. And uh, if we have one zero, then here one false value. So we, it will produce one uh, zero, I mean false value. And here if you take zero and one, it will produce zero. And if both are zero, it will give only false value. This is the true table for under function as we all know, but, um, so we can find the threshold value. What is the threshold value here as per the previous uh, Mikula Pitts model? See how to find the theta. If there is no inhibitory, so we have no P, we have only W. So the, there are, uh, if there are K excitatory inputs, then K into W will be greater than or equal to theta, which is greater. So theta will lie between KW and K minus 1W. So based on that, we will have here, we have K is equal to two because we have two input units. So two into W, W is here weight. How can we choose weight? Actually, the weight is chosen by training posts. 
So we have to adjust with the weights. We have to change once again, once again by training. We have to give one uh, weight. Initialize we initially we have to give the weights randomly. There is uh, no proper method for finding the weights, and we have to give the random values to the weights. And uh, after training the network, uh, we have to compare the expected the uh, received uh, output with the expected output. If the there is some error, then we have to change the weights. Okay, by training. Changing the weight is called the training. Okay. So we have randomly taken the weights to be one in this case, x1, x2. So take this to be the output y here, two input units. So we are having x1, x2 here. And so initially, I have given the weights as one, one. So this one, one, if you want to take two, two, you can well and uh, you can well to take uh, this is one. Some if you want to take this to be some two you can even take two if the expected answer is not received then you have to change these weights okay these are randomly chosen okay for our problem i have chosen it as one one okay now what is the output here so we have to first calculate the threshold what is the threshold as in the previous case this is w is one here see w is one and k is two input so our k is two so two w that is two into one is KW is equal to 2. And K minus 1W is 2 minus 1. That is 1. So we should take theta more than 2 and less than or equal to 2. So our theta is here. Here it is 1 and here it is 2. So after 1, we can take only 2 to be our theta. That is threshold value. Okay. Now we have the threshold value. Then we have to find the input and the activation function. And based on that, we have to get the output. So what is the output? So y is equal to f of y input, that is net r input. The input function is given by y inputs equal to, as we all know, it is nothing but product xi y a. Sorry, xi w a. This is equal to what is xi here? x1, x2, and we are having weight weight. So x1 into 1 plus x2 into 1. So this is our net input, or y in a, i n or net input. So what is our activation function? We have to find the activation function. That is our activation function is nothing but f of y i n. This is equal to. So our threshold is 2. See, our threshold theta is 2. So if net input, if you calculate this net input to be less than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to 2, then this activation <coughs> will take 1. And our net is less than 2, then our activation function will assume the value 0. Okay. So this is the idea followed from the uh, Mikula Kitschmann. Right. Okay. So we have to substitute net input in, and uh, if it is greater than or equal to 2, we will take 1, and if it is less than 2, we will take 0. Then we can calculate the cases one by one. You take the first case, right? First case, what is x1 and x2? You take 1, 1. Suppose x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 1. So, substitute in this. So, net input is equal to x1 plus x2. That is equal to 2. So, we will have uh, in uh, activation function. That is y is equal to f of net is equal to 1. Because this is 2. So, if our net input is greater than or equal to theta that is 2 then we will take assign 1 so we will assign 1 because we are having 2 here so it is about uh, it is a threshold value over threshold so it is 1 similarly for here it is net output is 1 so this is our 1 so here we have received the expected uh, response for case 2 similarly for case 2 you take uh, here x1 is 1 and x2 is 0 so our net inputs, you substitute here. So net is equal to x1 plus x2. So net will be 1. So now calculate the activation function. Take y is equal to f of net input. That is y i n. This is equal to. So if you calculate here, this is uh, as this is 1. As per this condition, this is less than 2. So we will take 0 here. See, the answer is received as we expected. In the third, third case also, you can have the same scenario. And in the fourth case also, you have the same, same. In all the cases, we can have the expected outputs as this, right? So this is the 
basic application of Mikula Pitts model for and function. Similarly, we can use the R function and we can also have the same thing will be happening for R, R function. You can use the same idea and you can uh, perform the R function. You can obtain the uh, outputs of the R function by using Nikola Pitts model. And the NOT function for NOT function. I'm sorry. Okay. I want to open some. So, writing page, digital page. Are you able to see one page? Professor, are you able to see one page? I want to write in this page. That's why I am. Uh, okay. Is it visible, Professor? One plain page. Professor, is it yeah. visible? You can start working you to write something. Okay, you okay, write write something. okay, I will write, I will write. Yeah. Have you seen something? I have written not function. Oh, just plain note. Still uh, plain note. What, Professor? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Ah, okay. Okay, next we will see NOT function. How to obtain the outputs of the NOT function using Nikola Pitts neuron model. See, as in the earlier case. We also know NOT function gives the value 1 if the input is false, that is 0. And it will return the false value 0 if the input is 1. Okay, that we all know. So, true table may be of the form. So, x, here it is only one input. We are giving for NOT function, we are uh, giving only one input. So, for if you give 1, our expected output is 0. If you are giving 0, our expected output is 1. Okay. What is the uh, Mikula Pitts neuron model here? We are having only one unit, that is x. We are having only one output, that is y. Okay. In this model, weight is randomly chosen to be 1. Now we have to find the threshold value theta. As earlier, we have to find the theta by uh, using the uh, uh, range value. See, what is k here? Here, no, only excitatory unit, no inhibitory unit. So, we are having k to be 1 here and w is 1. So, this is kw is 1. Okay. So, our threshold must be, and k minus 1w is 0. So, our threshold should be more than 0 and less than 1. So, obviously, it is 1. Okay. So, based on this uh, threshold value, we have to find the input and uh, net input and activation function. And after that, we can get the output res response. We will see one by one. Now, what is net input? Y input is equal to summation xi, yi. Here, we have only one node, input node. So, x into 1. So, this is of the form x into 1. So, our input is x. So, what is activation function? So, how to calculate activation function y is equal to f of y input. This is equal to 1. If uh, net input is, this is binary, you know, for, uh, but this is not function. This is not function means you have to give the false value. If, if it is false, it will take 1. If it is uh, true, it will take 0. So, in that case, here, if your net input is in the, instead of greater than or, the, or equal to theta, you are having here less than or equal to theta. Here our theta is 1. So, if net input is less than or equal to 1, it is 1. If net input is greater than 0, sorry, greater than 1, it is 0. Okay. Actually, if uh, net input is greater than or equal to theta, we are taking 1 in the previous case. But here it is, we are using not function. So, so we should not take the same case here. We have to give the uh, negation. We have to negate the previous case, right? Then we will see one by one. There are two cases. First, if take a, if x takes one, what will happen? And if x takes zero, what will happen? First, in the first case, take x as zero. So substitute in the net input. What is our net input here? X. So it is zero. So zero. So net input is less than one. 
okay zero is less than one so obviously this net input is lying in this uh, region so we will have the activation value to be one okay and similarly oh i'm sorry this is the second case but the zero case we are having one okay because i have taken zero so here x is zero i have taken x as zero and net input and uh, we will get one expected output for the second case so for the second case here it is one x equal to one and your net input what is your net input so x substitute in here we will have one so find out your activation function so net input is one which is equal to which is equal to one so you will have one here right I think I have done a small mistake here. So it is zero. So net input is zero. So the answer will be here it is one. So net input. I'm sorry, this is greater than or equal to here. This is strictly less than. This is strictly less than. This is greater than or equal to. Now it is okay. So this will be zero, right? Okay. Because this is not case, we have to reverse the previous uh, theta values, right? So this is the model for the Nikolak um, model for the not function. Okay. Similarly, we can see under not function. For under not function, <coughs> what does under not function? Actually, it gives the true value. If the first input value is one, otherwise it is it gives zero value. For example, the true table, if you see the true table, we will find the under not function. So there are two inputs actually. So one expected output, that is why. So here, if the first value is one, so this will return zero. And if first is one, second is zero, it will return one. And if the first is zero, second is one, it will return zero. And if both are zero that is one only this case only it will give one if the first value first input value is one it will uh, returns one otherwise it will zero in all the cases so this is the root table for the under not function so actually here one under is included so for that the mikula pitts model is like this so here we have two input stages so we will have x1 x2 this one is only excitatory and this will be inhibitory okay because we are having under not function okay only excitatory uh, input units will not uh, be sufficient to conclude the under not function okay whenever we are having not with the and we have to use this uh, inhibitory units also Okay, this is this is the Mikula pitch model for this under not uh, function. So now we can ask uh, earlier we can how to find the threshold. These uh, weights are uh, given randomly. Okay, and how to find theta value? Here you are having two, so you are kw is equal to. So here uh, x one into one, x two into minus one. Uh, we all know there are two cases. Suppose inhibitory units in are involved in uh, Mikula pitch model then our theta should be like this theta should be greater than kw minus p i mean nw minus p where n is the number of excitatory inputs here we are having only one excitatory input our k is one into w is one so this is one minus p is one so one minus one this is zero so we have to take theta to be sorry this theta that is so your theta should be more than zero. So theta is taken to be one in this case. Is it not? Is it clear? Okay. Now how to find the under not function responses? You take the net input. How to calculate the net input? As we already seen, this is nothing but x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus etc. Here we have our x1. So x1, what is our w1? So what is our w1? One here and plus x2, what is our w2? It is minus one. 
So here we are having x1 minus x2. This is our net import. So we will find the activation function. What is our activation function? That is nothing but f of y net input is equal to, it will take plus one if our threshold, that is net input is greater than or equal, threshold is one here, see? So this, if it is greater than or equal to theta, that is one, we will take one. Otherwise, we will take zero, right? Okay, then after that, we will see the cases. So if the inputs, whether uh, we will see whether if the inputs are uh, taken to be one, one, we will get the uh, expected response zero here. And in the second case, if we take x1 to be one and x2 to be zero, we will see whether we get the expected response to be one. And if it is zero, one, whether we see, we check whether we get zero and if both are zero, whether we get zero, we will see one by one. From the first case, x, x1 is one, x2 is one, you take x2 is equal to one. Now substitute in the net input. So what will be net input? x1 minus one, that is zero. So, the, so this is less than one. So as per this one, so the uh, uh, activation function will give the value zero. So what is our y? Activation value, function value, that is zero. So we can check whether we get the expected. Yes, it is zero. So we have received zero here also. For the case two, you take x1 as here one, x2 is zero. So find out the net input. What is your net input? This is x1 minus x2. So substitute the values x1 and x2. Here you are having one. So this is the uh, equal to threshold value. So we will take the function value, f activation function value to be one. See, y is equal to f of net input is equal to. So this is one. Check whether the uh, targeted values received. Yes. For the third case and fourth case also, you can have the same scenario. You can easily check. Okay. So this is the. Uh, Mikula Pitts uh, mechanism to get the undenoted function. So I will give you the next one. It is most important. Other than these three, we will have to go with the uh, exclusive R function. It is most important for exclusive R. We are very familiar with the and gate nor and or not and undenoted, right? But exclusive R is uh, different from these three. Next, we, see, we will see how to find the Outputs of exclusive R function using Nicola Pitts model, right? As you know, this XR function return two value if exactly one of the input values is true. Otherwise, it will give the zero value, right? We all know the true table of R function, XR function, exclusive R function. That is R XR function. Mm -hmm. We will check the true table. So here, the value. Ah, professor. Before you continuing with the other example can we have a discussion you want to have discussion yes before continuing the example can we okay. have a discussion ah okay professor okay 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 ah. we have some student in this classroom ah okay okay yeah they have okay. some, if they have uh, some doubts, they, they can ask me now. Okay. Yes, Professor. About the uh, fundamental mathematics uh. and introduction in the basics. Ah, yes, artificial neural networks. Ah, yes, yeah, actually, this ah. is uh, still yeah, just uh, type of the machine learning. Okay, See, you so want... ah. the two, <coughs> three layers, including ah. input layer, hidden layer, ah, and yes. output layers. Ah, okay. And she gave an example for the logic of mathematics and our uh, study we already uh, having some discussion with uh, our student okay to talk about the deep learning okay which is the uh, number of layer is more than of three layers 
Okay. In mathematical point of view, mm. I believe you are very expert in that. Maybe, maybe, okay. But I have got some problem in uh, coding, especially when we use uh, MATLAB for ah, yes, uh, MATLAB, MATLAB. supervised learning or unsupervised learning. Yes. Yeah, how do we establish in ah. advance mathematically the yes. activation function? Because as we know, we have a lot of activation function, ah, for example, yes, yes, yes. A linear activation function, and non bipolar, sigmoid, tan ah, activation yes. function. Yes. Uh, could you tell me about that? Okay, okay. For example, I will tell you, compared to linear activation function, see, I will go to the slide, you can easily understand. One minute. Ah, see. Identity function, sigmoid function. Um, and uh, in sigmoidal function, you are having two kind of functions, binary and bipolar. Okay. For problems, if you want the output, expected output between 0 and 1, it is better to take the binary sigmoidal function. That is logistic function. Based on the problem, we can choose the activation function. Okay, we cannot fix in the previous in the uh, beginning. So based on the problem, based on our expected outputs, we can fix. If you want the value between the output range between minus one to plus one, it is better to take bipolar sigmoidal function. Yes, professor. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, otherwise, linear. Yeah. Ah, yes, non-linear is uh, mostly used. Because compared to linearity, if you use non-linear function, we will get the better performance. So in non-linear function, if you are uh, targeting for the output to be between 0 and 1, it is better to take that first kind of function, that is binary sigmoidal function. If you want to have the output between minus 1 to plus 1, then it is better to have bipolar sigmoidal function. It is, it is simply what is uh, sigmoidal function is? Uh, that is bi binary sigmoidal function is nothing but f of x equal to 1 by 1 plus exponential of some steepness minus steepness parameter into x. That is the standard function. Okay. Uh, uh, if you, you want, yes, yes, professor. If you want to have uh, the range between minus 1 and plus 1, that is for bipolar sigmoidal function, you better take the hyperbolic tangent function. That will range over minus 1 to plus 1. So that uh, function kind of function, that uh, tangent hyperbolic function will be more suitable for uh, in case of bipolar sigmoidal function. Okay, Professor. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank uh, you. Sir. Some uh, statistician or other mathematicians say that when we run a programming, for example, for the <coughs> supervised learning, Oh, oh, yeah, prediction yes. or classification or clustering, something like that. Ah, yes. Normally, it is all in the black box. Ah. It is not explained uh, explicitly oh, yes, how yes. to uh, those kind of activation function running. Mm -hmm. When we have a programming, we just... Uh, choose whether we want to have sigmoid, tan, yes. arpa yes, tan, relu, leki, relu, or binary yes, exponential linear unit. And we just uh, consider whether the, the errors already tend to zero. Now, especially we choose the maximum, uh, sorry, main sec one error. Yes. Yeah, but uh, uh, sometimes we are not uh, having a clue sensitively mm. if it is not uh, binary or Boolean type of data. For example, uh. all the data is uh, interval. Uh. Yeah. For example, we want to have a, a what a time series forecasting for the rainfall. For example. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All those are. Uh, what uh, 
the input data and target data are interval. Yes, bro. that's a problem because exponential linear unit, as well as a square, a square nonlinear unit, inverse square yes. root linear unit as activation function. So yes. the uh, similar characteristic. Oh yes, yes, yes. So most preferably you can take nonlinear function because nonlinear function is generalized version of linear function. So instead of taking yeah. linear function for even pa pattern classification and the data classification, you can adopt even identity function. Sometimes it may work. So depending upon your problem, if your problem needs a linear solution, you can go with a linear function. If your okay, data okay. is if uh, your hmm. data has uh, non-linearity, it has some non, uh, I mean, uh, irregularity, right? Yeah. In the okay, case, okay. you can go for non-linear function. That is the case here. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, secondly, Nagamani. Yes, please. Uh, our experience also shows that if we have a set of data, for hmm. example, we can get the data from data set providers hmm. then directly we <laughs> splitting the data into three cases or uh, three uh, sets for example okay. training sets okay, okay okay and validation set and testing sets okay when we uh, use the original data without any uh, initial uh, or without any doing normalization uh, okay. Normally, the programming is hard to converge. It's yes. hard to ex interpolate the target. Normally, yes. this, the error is uh, <coughs> very big. But yes. if we do the normalization okay. process first on those type okay. of data, then we can get a good uh, interpolation. Ah, uh, okay. Is there any mathematical reasoning Okay. Should we do a normalization process on all type of the data? Okay. You are asking for normalization of data for uh, data classification, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, any, any classification, clustering or prediction, but uh, uh, normalization by using min max theory normally is important to do Otherwise, okay. we got uh, uh, the big error when we run the programming. Oh, yes. Uh, okay, I will check it, Professor. I'm not that much familiar with the data classification. Okay, just presently, I'm uh, doing some simple examples. Uh, I'm not getting into deep learning, much learner. So I will check and I will send you through materials or uh, 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 I mean, um, the methods available methods to you through our uh, whatsapp okay okay okay, okay. because uh, yes okay. i'm not i'm not even much familiar with uh, that kind of data classification okay no problem no problem uh, okay i will later now, I, will, I will i will check and i will inform you okay will send okay, you. okay 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 and now the the last question uh, ah. and it is uh, very important for me as well in mm -hmm. your uh, paper uh, mm -hmm. much of your paper dealing with the qualitative or mathematical analysis yes professor yes and you are also working on passivity yes. theory this yes. uh, this uh, passivity theory yes actually what uh, kind of contribution of those theory yes in uh, graph uh, sorry in artificial neural network Yes. Uh, it is contributing to how to get a learning weight fastly or yeah. how to get the accuracy of the in output target uh, nicely or whatever. Okay. Uh, but usually we are not uh, having any quantitative data. We are not, we are uh, always dealing with the qualitative structure. That means our a neural networks is converted in terms of an uh, a differential equation, right? So yeah, our yeah. 
a neural network is mainly a kind of a, a part of a, a differential equation so whenever we are having differential mm. equation we should have some solution and that solution should be having some stability properties so otherwise mm. we cannot further uh, deal with anything with the, such such kind of differential equation if a differential equation without any stable solution and or without any uh, boundedness so it is uh, there is some meaningless we cannot uh, deal with uh, anything with uh, that kind of differential equation so based on that our as our artificial neural networks are uh, converted in model in terms of differential equation we should know the behavioral properties uh, uh, like uh, it is uh, uh, oscillation and it is periodicity and its uh, solution existence and the existence of solution so all the th all these things we have to analyze otherwise uh, using that neural networks in experimental works is meaningless so for that purpose we are uh, analyzing just we are analyzing its qualitative structure not quantitative sense not about the output or not about the data so we are al always uh, going to uh, predict the uh, behavioral properties of the how far it is stable okay and uh, how, what about the solution nature of that kind of neural networks if you are uh, choosing some kind of new new type of neural networks so you have to uh, check whether that kind of neural networks will have some solution or not if the solution exists so in which region it is stable and uh, what are the critical points so those things we have to discuss first and later we can apply it to the experimental works so our part is restricted with the only qualitative structure we have not yet uh, moved to the application part yes professor yeah 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 ah, okay. yes uh, once once the uh, once the neural network uh, structure is analyzed and it is confirmed then we can apply that uh, neural networks and we can take that neural networks to the uh, process of some data classification or pattern recognition pattern association like that so we have not yet uh, um, um, started that type of uh, uh, work that is experimental work so in our uh, next stage we want to move to some uh, um, kind of uh, you know this um, image processing so we want to apply okay. our, uh, apply our uh, existing that is uh, what we have published in our paper we have uh, uh, we are uh, going to take that uh, networks uh, for which the properties are analyzed we have uh, we want to apply uh, that uh, kind of neural networks to experiment with the image processing that is uh, image uh, processing uh, field so that is our next yeah. step oh, we have not yet started we are uh, going in that way okay okay that's ah, yes, fantastic yes. because yes. when i see the uh, paper on the yes. qualitative approach yes, especially sir. when they are uh, studying passivity 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 yeah. yes professor and yes. they include as well yes, the sir. integral theorem yes. as well calculus and so on yeah yes which professor. is shown a uh, very complex side of the mathematical analysis yeah. yes professor it is purely about <laughs> mathematical analysis um, yeah but yeah. but in in graph neural uh, sorry in artificial neural networks especially for the application normally yes. we just having a data yes and then we test the data we train the data and finally yes. we get the output yes whether the output is quite uh, similar with the target if it yes. is similar then we have satisfied that yes professor so yes. is the passivity uh, theorem talking yes. about the stability in yes. regard with the uh, what uh, convergent uh, uh, history of the error of the artificial neural network something yes. like that yes professor yes professor can you repeat one one more time professor can you repeat one more time yeah when yeah. when you are talking about a stability ah, ah yes analysis yes, yes. ah yes uh, ah. by using passi pa passivity 
analysis in uh, neural network? Yes. Uh, is it uh, relating to the convergence history or the error history? When it is stable, uh, what descending, for example, the errors coming down, 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 and there is no a big oscillation of the error. If ah, the yes. error is not stable, then mm. up, down, up, down, up, down. Is that what the... But what do you mean by stability uh, theory in neural networks? Ah, yes, the same thing. Whenever you are equi equilibrium, your system approaches the equilibrium state, then we say that our system becomes stable. If it oscillates between the, uh, if it is not going towards the equilibrium point, but it is for going far away from the equilibrium position, then we say that it is not stable. Here, the same thing is also happening for neural networks. If, if the neural networks converges towards the equilibrium state, then automatically it will become stable. Okay. If, okay. It, if it oscillates, if it oscillates, that uh, that indicates itself indicates that our uh, neural uh, network uh, system uh, doesn't approach the uh, equilibrium point. Okay. That okay, is, Nagawa. It's not very nice. Very yes, nice. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes, professor. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Do you still have a time to share your slide, or is it enough? Is if you have a time, I will share. Otherwise, uh, we can uh, close, professor. If you have a time, I will. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I have some it, more, it, pro, it, some more uh, slides. Okay, I will finish. I have uh, some more examples, and I will uh, finish. And uh, uh, within 10 minutes, I, can I finish, Professor? Yes, yes, definitely. This is up to you. Okay, if you professor. would like to finish, then we can finish our discussion. And okay. then see you in Wednesday then, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, sure, sure. Okay, okay, I will finish it soon. Okay. Next, we will see some Hebnet. And uh, exclusive R is important thing because it has some... Uh, specific uh, properties other than that done to get and so this uh, for exclusive R, I will finish this one for exclusive R, how to get the outputs using uh, Mecula pitch model and we, as we all know for exclusive R, uh, the input values are so if it is one one the output will be zero if it is one zero it will reflect one and if it is zero one it will also reflect one and if it is zero, zero, it will be zero. So this is the exclusive uh, R table, as we all know. And what is the Mikula Pitts model? Uh, okay, so this is the Mikula Pitts model. So here, the inputs are only two inputs. So we are having x1, x2 here. The weights are 1, 1. But we are also having exclusive or includes and not. So because and is also involved here, we should have the inhibitory uh, units. That is here minus 1, this is minus 1. Here we are having another layer represented by z1, z2 after this one we will get the output here we have one extra layer other than the previous layers previous models here the weights are assigned to be one comma one and one uh, I, I have already yeah. told you that the weights are randomly chosen yeah. here yeah. We have to first because only one layer is not able to predict the value of threshold we need the another layer okay okay here what is uh, x1 exclusive or that is xr x2 this is nothing but x1 and not x2 r x2 and not x1 i think you are all familiar with uh, this exclusive or uh, uh, logic function right so this is the basic of the exclusive or function so this you take this one to be Z1 and this one to be Z2. 
so we are have another uh, so that's why because of these two cases we have one more layer here is that one is a two layer okay from the exclusive or function definition right so this will be so is that one is nothing but x1 and not x2 and is that two is x2 and not x1 so first we have calculated the here based on x1 and, and x2 we have to get the output values z1 z2 and from z1 z2 once again we have to get the targeted output right okay next what is now we will uh, see the net input for z1 z2 so what is our z1 so net input for z1 is input for a1 is equal to we will take as i already told you threshold level based on threshold here threshold level will be one because you are having two excitatory units and uh, two uh, inhibitory units so as per as per the previous uh, discussion about threshold so your kw should lie between so your uh, i mean um, theta level should be greater than k nw minus p where n is your input signal that is 2 so 2 into w is 1 1 so 2 w that is 2 into 1 minus you are having p as 1 here so it is equal to 1 so your threshold is taken to be 1 okay now take uh, this z1 z input what is your z input if your z input is greater than or equal to 1 you will take 1 if your z input calculated in z input is less than 1 you will take 0 this is for z1 and how to calculate the output for z2 similar uh, thing for z2 so z input uh, 2 will take 1 if uh, z input 2 is greater than or equal to 1 otherwise it will take 0 right so now we first calculate z1 and then uh, calculate z2 and based on z1 z2 we can calculate y so how to find z1 you know what is z1 previously we have written what is our z1 x1 under not x2 so take that one so this is equal to x1 under not x2 you substitute all the things here z input is equal to x1 w1 plus x2 because we are having two inputs under two weights so based on the formula we will have you will have this one z input one is equal to x1 w1 plus x2 w2 and what is x1 here x2 we are having uh, four uh, cases this is 1 1 1 0 0 1 and 0 0 what is your z input 1 here you are having w1 as 1 and w2 is equal to minus 1 c here w1 is equal to 1 and w2 from x1 you are having 1 minus 1 right so you have taken two weights and you substitute here so x1 w1 plus x2 w x1 into w1 plus x2 into that is 1 into 1 plus 1 into minus 1 so you will get 0 here and similarly for the other cases i will write just three answers you can uh, simply calculate it is very simple method so you you can uh, calculate by yourself one here so z1 will take one if uh, your input z1 is uh, greater than or equal to one otherwise it is zero you go here here your um, z input is 0. So as per the previous one, it will take 0. And here it is 1. So it will take it. Here it is less than uh, 1. So it is 0. Here it is less than 1. So it is 0. Okay. Similarly, you can calculate z2. So it is also very simple. Just I will uh, write down the answers only. You can uh, calculate easily. So similar to previous one. Here the uh, output table for z2 is 11 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, As previously. What is z input to? Here also x1 w1 plus x2 w2, the same thing because you are having only two nodes, two weights. And what is our uh, z input to? Here weights are w1 is equal to 1, minus 1 and w2 is equal to 1. So substitute all the things. So what is our uh, x1, x2? That is 1, 1. If you substitute 1, 1 here and w1 is equal to minus 1 and plus 1 here, you will get 0 and minus 1, 1, 0. And you substitute uh, in the activation function, what is z2? z2 will be 1. If your input value is more than or equal to 1, if your input value is less than 1, it will take 0. Then substitute everything here. So it is 0. So substitute there and you will get the z2 value as 
zero it is because it is smaller than one it is smaller than one it is equal to one it is smaller than one right a simple thing so you have calculated z1 z outputs for z1 z2 then based on z1 z2 you can go for the net output y so what is our y f of y inputs equal to it will take one as earlier it will take always one if uh, the your threshold is your input values greater than or equal to one and it is zero if your input values less than one based on this you can calculate y so first you are what is z1 z2 your inputs are for now z1 z2 hmm? so what are the cases you are having four cases for z1 you are having 0 1 0 0 for z2 you are having 0 0 1 0 correspondingly so sub should take all those values what is z1 here 0 1 0 0 and 0 0 1 0 now calculate what is your y input it can be obtained what is y input y input is equal to x1 here you are having z1 so z1 w1 plus z2 w2 so already you are having w1 w2 to be 1 1 because you are uh, taking the weights randomly as 1 1 here so z1 w1 plus z2 so z1 into 1 plus z2 into 1 so here you substitute those values you will be having so z1 plus z2 so your net input so calculate here your net input Suppose you are having z1, z2 are 0, subtract here you will have 0, this 1 plus 0, this 0 plus 1, this is 0 plus 0. Okay. So you substitute here. So it is less than uh, 1. So it is take so your y will be 0. Here it is 1. So equal to 1. It lies here. So it will be 1. It is 1. So here it is 1. It is 0. So it is smaller than. So it is 0. So this is the exclusive R output based on Nikola Pitts model. So there are some more methods. This is uh, for um, uh, logic function. For executing logic function, we can use Mikula Pitts model. And there are now I, I have already told you like uh, Rosenblade and uh, Mikula Pitts and even Hebb. So so many people have introduced different kinds of neural networks and for different type of problems, uh, we can use uh, different type of networks. And even you can solve these problems using Hebnet. You can uh, solve this exclusive or using Hebnet, and also you can you you can uh, uh, do pattern uh, classification. You want even Hebnet. It is very easy to uh, having uh, to have a pattern classification with the Hebnet. So even perceptron, we have also seen that the perceptron is one kind of networks. So in perceptron, uh, iterative procedure is used to adjust uh, the weights. Okay. Even you can use that perceptron for pattern classification and pattern recognition also. So there are many methods to solve many kind of problems. Okay, we can use it in different areas like image processing, signal processing, data processing. So mainly the artificial networks, I mean, uh, this uh, machine learning is the big domain. Within machine learning, we have to go with the deep learning. And within deep learning, if we, we if for image processing, convolutional neural network is more appropriate. So within artificial neural network comes under deep learning. So this is the role of artificial neural networks um, for experimental works. So with this, uh, I think I can conclude here itself. So once again, I thank our uh, Professor Dafik uh, of uh, University of Jember and uh, all other professors and all other uh, uh, research fellows. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for giving me this nice opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any clarification, you can uh, now ask me. Uh, it is left to you. Thank you. Professor, thank you so much, Professor. Very nice uh, presentation and share your idea. Okay, and thank hopefully you. we uh, keep maintaining our joint research in the future to have a productive uh, publication yeah okay, now we you. also uh, studying in uh, what uh, the uh, application side of the neural networks especially yes, for the agriculture uh, precision agriculture for ah, yes, uh, yes. Uh, for example uh, forecasting the soil moisture and also the uh, production of the agriculture uh, plantation and something like that.
Yeah, yes. and much of the time we use uh, uh, forward propagation and also backward propagation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For the uh, image processing, we also do uh, working on the convolutional neural network. But uh, still, yes, convolution, of course. Yes, we have uh, sometimes uh, what uh, challenge uh, in uh, having a fast. Uh, what uh, uh, what learning weight in such a way the output is uh, yes. attaining the target very fast yeah normally uh, how to handle with the learning weight especially when we run the programming yeah yes. sometimes it has not uh, attained the uh, target in just uh, one iteration or one epoch now, then we should do again and again, yeah. And that's the challenge, it's our uh, neural network research actually, yeah. Yes, brother. But anyway, uh, uh, the, uh, what uh, research should go, and we uh, should uh, collaborate uh, time to the time, in such a way we can have a good uh, productive uh, collaboration. Sure, so Thank you very much. Yes, Professor. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, see you the day after tomorrow. Yes, thank Professor. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. But thank if you. you would like to uh, join with the first session of our conference, you are more uh, than yes, welcome. Uh, yes. Hopefully, if you have your student to join with us, you are also more than welcome. Yeah. Okay. I asked my student to join uh, through... Oh. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, yeah. Professor. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank see you. Again. See you, yeah. Professor. Okay. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Okay, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Carpet. Thank you very much for, for the speaker, Dr. Nagamanu, for the presentation. The knowledge could be useful in our life. Ladies and gentlemen, time goes so fast, and now we are entering the last agenda that is closing. Let us close this event by saying Alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> For the last, I do apologize if there were mistakes. Thank you very much for the time, attention, and see you again tomorrow. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.